first viewers, we are going to take you two years back. We are going to show these visuals on your screen. Remember these visuals? On the 1st of March 2021, Prime Minister Modi showed the way by putting his trust in Brand India. He took his first shot of Made in India Covaxin. This was, remember, amidst sharp criticism which was coming in at the time of Made in India vaccines, which was then dismissed even by some as BJP's vaccine. Then you had the Prime Minister. He refused to take any foreign vaccine. He put his faith in India's vaccine. The critics were then silenced. Well, today again, the doubters' lobby is back. They are deriding and dismissing India's pharma industry. After Gambia, now 18 children have died in Uzbekistan after they allegedly consumed an Indian cough syrup, Doc 1 Max. However, after a thorough probe, a thorough probe, their own government, the Gambian, uh, the Uzbekistan government has given a clean check to the Indian manufacturer and even called it a case of unsupervised overdose. Remember, this is no one in India. It is Uzbekistan's own test labs which gave out the results. The government has said it is unsupervised overdose, which unfortunately led to the lives of 18 being lost. But back home, the doubters have struck again. Leading the charge was Congress's Jairam Ramesh. He mocked the Prime Minister of boasting of India's pharma industry and even demanded strict action against in the Indian firm. Is there a global conspiracy? to then malign brand India. While globally India is being called the pharmacy of the world, why are some back home deriding our own entrepreneurship and our spirit? Listen into some of the criticisms. It is the responsibility of the government to uh, investigate properly because it is a question of the prestige of our nation, of our country, and if some children are killed in other uh, country, it may happen even in our own country. Mm -hmm. So a strict action should be taken against such companies. I had no idea uh, the, if the medicine had a ba uh, bad impact on health. And we have to uh, find, uh, find out what is this. Only by blaming or non-blaming that a question. It's a question of life of the children. नहीं अब नाम्बिया के बाद जब उज़बेकिस्तान में भी इसी तरह की घटना हुई हैं जहां इंडियन मैन्युफैक्चर्ड मेडिसिन्स को यूज़ करने के बाद मरीजों की मौत हुई है ये चिंताजनक भी है अफसोसजनक भी और निंदनीय भी है भारत सरकार को उन फार्मेसिटिकल फर्म्स का पता लगाना चाहिए जिन्होंने ये दवाइयाँ भेजी हैं खाली ये कहने भर से कि इससे भारत का नाम बदनाम होता है समस्या का समाधान नहीं होता और इनके विरुद्ध कड़ी कार्रवाई की जानी चाहिए। So let's fact check the doubters' lobby by what the Uzbekistan government itself has said. Giving a clean check to the Indian pharma firm, it has said first that this drug was tested and approved. It said that this syrup was registered in 2012 in Uzbekistan. Each drug series was tested in the country and certificate of conformity was also issued at the time. The second reason why India cannot be blamed or the Indian firm cannot be blamed is the overdose angle. That the syrup was allegedly incorrectly used by the parents. The syrup was used by the parents as an anti-cold remedy and children took these drugs at their home for two to seven days, three to four times a day. The third reason is that there was no prescription for all of this drug which was being administered, that all the children given the drug without any of the doctor's prescriptions and that the main component of the drug is uh, paracetamol. Paracetamol shall be used at a body temperature of 38 to 38.5 degrees. At normal body temperature, taking this drug is strictly prohibited. And this is what they themselves are saying, saying that the Indian pharma firm perhaps is not to blame. But remember, in the past, 66 deaths in Gambia also were linked to the cough syrups which are being manufactured in India. The WHO had then blamed the Indian firm of substandard drugs. But later investigation happened and that revealed that a larger conspiracy was there against Brand India. Now, this is what our drug controller had said. First, it said that there is an international narrative which is being built to target quality of Indian products. WHO drew premature link between deaths and the Indian syrup and the samples were tested were found to be complying with all the specifications. 
So is there really a global conspiracy against the Indian farmer? Well, after the Uzbek tragedy, the government of India has taken cognizance of this issue, even promised to survey the factory and take action. But the BJP has lashed out at the doubters for maligning India's pharma industry. Listen in. Um, Uzbek authorities have not formally taken up the matter with us. Nevertheless, our embassy has contacted the Uzbek side and is seeking um, further details of their own investigation. And of course, uh, you know, we are, um, we understand that uh, legal action has been initiated by the Uzbek um, authorities against um, some people, including the local representative of the company there. And these, uh, and that, I know they are, they are looking into it in terms of further investigation of the cup syrup. Hate for Prime Minister Modi, Congress is now running down India and its entrepreneurial spirit. It is a fact that India is a laboratory or it is the pharmacy of the world. We have provided vaccines and medicines to the world at the most critical times. And it has been proven and admitted by both the Gambian agency as well as the drug controller that the deaths in Gambia were not a result of the consumption of cough syrup produced in India. Every incident is unfortunate and obviously where action has to be taken, it's always, always taken. But it's unfortunate in the manner in which the Congress party almost wishes to celebrate in running down India's image. What is there, this thing about power, to that extent they are so desperate, it seems, that they will run down the whole industry, they will run down India's image for every incident? Now remember, there was a similar strike by the doubters lobby when India even certified Covaxin, an Indian-made COVID vaccine. Let's remind you what they had said. You had Shashi Tharoor. This is all way back in 2021. He said approval to the Covaxin is premature. It may be dangerous. Then you had Nawab Malik of the NCP coming out and said it should be the Prime Minister who gets vaccinated first to settle the safety doubts over this Following which, you have the Prime Minister who took that vaccine as well. He took Covaxin. Manikam Tagore of the Congress Party said, after 83 lakh Indians tested and took Covaxin, only then did the Prime Minister take it. Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary of the Congress Party came out and said the Prime Minister is taking Indian vaccine. It's not a spectacle to be hailed, even though they are the ones who had actually asked the Prime Minister to take the Indian-made vaccine. Then you had, of course, Akhilesh Yadav of the Samajwadi party, he says, I am not getting a vaccine, I don't trust BJP's vaccine. That's what they called it, BJP's vaccine. So let's go across to our panelists. Joining us today, Shahzad Punawala, national spokesperson of the BJP. Dr. Sanjeev Bagai is joining us, chairperson of Nephron. You have Tehseen Punawala, a political analyst, as well as Sanjay Jha and Northak. I'm going to come to you first, Tehseen, because one needs to understand. When Gambian government is not blaming India, when the Uzbek government is not blaming India or its pharmaceutical companies, why is the lobby hell-belt on maligning India and its image? Why back home all this criticism is coming in? So, Meghna, there are just two aspects to this, and I agree with you that in the case of Gambia, they have not really blamed India, and subsequent investigations showed that some of those 70 kids did not even consume the cup syrup. Uzbekistan has formally not uh, raised the complaint, and WHO has not given Indian authorities the documents. To that extent, I completely agree with you. That's point number one. But you are talking about the Indian vaccine. Do you know who threw the Indian vaccine manufacturers under the bus last month in the court? This present union government. Mm -hmm. Present union government. They said in court on affidavit, we did not force you to take the vaccine, and if you have any reaction, you can sue the vaccine manufacturer. The same vaccine that was made from our tax payment. So the Indian government thrown them under the bus. Look. The Indian pharma industry is the best in the world. The best in the world, okay? It's not happened in eight years. It's happened over 70 years. It's the best in the world. There are certain issues of DEG and Italian glycol that is said to have been found. Once the relevant papers will come, rest assured, professionally we'll investigate it. One child's death is one child too many. WHO has also said that these children should not be given cough syrup. There have been, uh, there have been mistakes on the part of the parents. Let us investigate it. Let both sides not jump the gun. This is not about nationalism. This is not about saying that India is a bad country. Let's investigate it properly. Let the documents come out. Be rest assured the Indian pharma industry is the best in the world. And it's not me. I'm glad you're taking such a liberal line on this. But Shehzad, that's the problem. The others haven't. You have Jairam Ramesh coming out and saying the Modi Sarkar should stop boasting about it. Stop calling the India pharma industry the best. And look at the realities on the ground, Shehzad. At the end of it, do you think kaf syrup to bas bahana hai, nishana paye? Still, it's Prime Minister Modi. 
You know, uh, I, Tehsin Punawala has to come in every night at 8.30 p.m. and undo the things that Congress Party does and perhaps the Congress Party, it's high time that they should reward him for that. But having said that, no matter how big and great the Indian pharma industry is, there is no cure or drug for the cynicism and negativity that at least one of the panelists will reflect in which his hatred for Modi will transmute it into hatred for India. Mm. Today, the Indian pharma industry is $42 billion worth at least in 2021. We have 20% of share in the global pharma exports. We are the largest supplier in the world when it comes to generic drugs by volume. We're the largest supplier when it comes to vaccines. But you know, you have a bunch of cynics who want to go a step ahead and tarnish and play the, into the Chinese hands. Now, of course, I can understand the Chinese are feeling very upset that their uh, domination in this entire pharma industry is being broken thanks to the policies we've adopted in the last eight years, 138% rise in our pharma exports because of the PLI schemes, because of the other things that we've taken, the steps we've taken. Obviously, the Chinese are feeling perturbed that there are agents here who want to go a step ahead and start blaming India for everything and tarnishing the image. Let's put the facts on the table. The fact is that the Gambian authorities, by the way, till date, have not been able to conclusively link that there's a causal effect between the, the so-called uh, incident and the, uh, the cough syrup. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the WHO, which was written to, we constituted a panel, we sent the samples to our own laboratories, nothing came out. The WHO did not supply us papers. The Uzbekistan incident, you've shown how it was due to overdose and unsupervised uh, prescription of that particular drug. You, they were using it as an anti-cold remedy, not for what purpose it was meant for. Mm. But there is an ilk, there is an ilk of people who will now blame India because they can't stand Modi. Tehseen can't get off the hook that easily. Tehseen and his entire brigade were right here on this show when Rahul was anchoring and they would say Covaxin is dangerous, don't take this vaccine. I don't know what their interests were. They were happy yeah, to promote Sinopharm. Sinopharm. They were highly happy to prom promote Sinopharm. The vaccine we can see that has caused havoc in China, but they were May trying to uh, trying to create a vaccine May hesitancy. They create mask the hesitancy, and on. today they are creating hesitancy about India's pharma sector. Uh, uh, Tessin, okay, quick, uh, quick rebuttal from Tessin. Right? There I'm are many Dr. others, and you know very well. Everyone said Pfizer like follow. Why do you want to go for an India? No, even Sinopharm. They even were advocating and batting for Sinopharm. At a time when, in retrospect, we know what the chair? effects of that has been. Tessin. Yeah, very quickly. Hmm. I have been on time now on both your colleague Rahul and Navika's show, absolutely backing Covishield. I have had lunch with Dr. Bagai, and we've spoken about Covishield. Dr. Covaxin. Please, may I, don't interrupt me. It's a fantastic vaccine. For co-vaccine, I said it may be, and I think that my word, it may be the best vaccine in the world. All I want to see is a, is a peer-reviewed, uh, peer review uh, in, a, in a medical journal, which is my oh. right. I have not said anything bad. I have said, and my word, it may be the best vaccine in the world. BJV so please, vaccine you throw the vaccine under the bus by telling them in the court that you can sue them. You've done it, not me. I stand by the They said we'll vaccine. become lab okay. rats, we would die. We, it's a BJP vaccine, it will call okay, impotency. These were the statements there. These right. statements are yeah, undeniable. Yeah. All of that is on record. Sanjay Jha, I need to come to you because it's very important that we reflect on what the Drug Controller General of India had said. It had said there is an international narrative which was built to target the quality of Indian products. Do you think somewhere the lobby, the doubters who wanted to question the Prime Minister have fallen into this larger trap? Uh, Meghna, three short points. First, the BJP spokesperson mm. is not prepared for the show. He started by taking on this China <laughs> position without telling us all, with the viewers, that 90% of India's drug manufacturers' needs for what I call as APIs come from China. Okay. So under Modi's government, India has become more dependent on China for actually our own drug production, which is a shame. Point number one. Point number two, pound for vaccine. You know, it is, you know, the, U the, the WHO has banned Covaxin for purchase by UN procurement agencies. We are not back because of to the that safety again. of the vaccine. I think it's a bit of late in the, the day to be discussing Just the hear me merits out. of Covaxin. Just hear me out. Not because of the safety of the vaccine, because of certain, of, shall we say, not the appropriate manufacturing facilities. So, you know, let us not be fooled by the pseudo-nationalism of the BJP here. The third point, Jairab Ramesh okay. makes an important point. The MEA spokesperson has agreed with it. 
that they are investigating as to what happened. Okay, that's a very valid point you've made. Even the MES spokesperson has said for... that we are going to look into it. Health minister Absolutely. has said we've going to if look into it. So does that mean that India, it is a clean chip for India? Perhaps India itself hasn't given a clean chip, but that's responsibility. Work. You've got to uh, work for it. I need to bring in Sanjeev Bagai. I need to bring in Sanjeev Bagai because after all, he should have the final word on this. Dr. Bagai, Indian pharmaceutical industry is the third largest when it comes to the volume, 14th largest in in terms of value, total annual turnover is roughly 2 lakhs 89 uh, thousand crore rupees for one year itself. There are several such stacks which are going to show. Is that one of the reasons why it is and will continue perhaps to be on the target of several of these pressure groups, malicious campaigns as well? I'm not talking about just in India, but internationally too. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so just to put Good all uh, all fears to rest, uh, both the Indian vaccines, Covaxin and Covishield, both are safe. Uh, if there is any data which any of the panelists required in peer review journals, I can forward it to them separately after the show. Uh, it's there in Lancet. It is there in Science Direct. Uh, there are randomized control trials of more than 68 which have had a meta-analysis in Cochrane which have been released. Mm -hmm. The Indian vaccines have done India extremely well. And the proof of the pudding is in the eating that in spite of all countries still burning with COVID, India is reasonably well placed. Coming to the cough syrup directly and mm. having dealt with pediatrics for right. more than 40 odd years, cough syrups are the most rampantly used, abused and overused formulations. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be calculated in children in milligrams per kilogram per day or in body surface area. If right. it is used inaccurately or in higher doses for a prolonged period of time in a child otherwise sick and receiving other medications right. along with this, it can indeed be very dangerous. This is not India centric. This happens all over the world. But for anyone, be it any foreign country mm. or any opposition person or a political analyst or any leader to make a judgment call on the Indian pharma industry without right. authentic facts or a proper inquiry having been done, it is not fair. And in the end, I would like to mention that this is a very, very robust system which is followed in India with regards to drugs. We have used hundreds and millions Absolutely. of tablets, syrups, injectables in the wards, in the ICUs. We've had no problem at all. I think that really settles the entire debate. You want to have your politics, have it outside. Not when lives are at risk and not when brand India is the one which is being maligned. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us here on the show. We are running out of time. Don't go anywhere. Madhav joins you on the other side.